Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. I have been away from you for some time, but I want to give a shout out and thanks to our ministerial staff uh, for holding it down uh, while their pastor had a break. Uh, they are a blessing to the body of Christ in and of themselves. Uh, so I just want to thank them. I know they uh, love the opportunity to be able to share and to minister, uh, but I just simply wanted to thank them uh, for stepping in, uh, for holding it down, and certainly God is going to bless and enrich their life. But I have missed uh, being with you, uh, and so I come certainly excited to share with you in our, uh, in our Bible study. <clears throat> Again, as always, I thank you for staying connected to us. Uh, God provides through human ingenuity, and human wisdom, the technology that we have. Uh, many of us never knew that we'd get to a point where we'd be totally dependent upon technology to teach, to worship. But God be praised that he's given humans the wisdom and the creativity to provide these means and these vehicles by which we can stay connected. So I want to thank you for staying connected to us here at First Baptist Church in North Tulsa. We want to thank you for viewing us, uh, not only in our daily devotionals at 8 a.m., thank you for viewing our Sunday morning worship, but also for viewing as you are tonight our Wednesday night Bible study. I'm excited to get into our Bible study. Uh, this is, uh, for us, being a historically black church, uh, this is Black History Month. This is African American History Month. And so we certainly want to give a shout out to our ancestors and those who have laid a foundation for us who are here. And so as I give our Bible study tonight, uh, it will somehow have, uh, or somewhat have an emphasis on history, the importance of history, and how God has blessed us in our history. So our Bible study topic this evening is entitled, The Landmarks of Life. The Landmarks of Life. I'm going to use as my scripture passage, 1 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 12. And when we go to 1 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 12, uh, it's a very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, I know we're all familiar with Samuel. And that 12th verse says this. Afterward, Samuel took a stone and set it upright between Mizpah and Shin. He named it or called it Ebenezer, explaining, the Lord has helped us up to this point. So we talk about the landmarks of life. Often God is calling us to be renewed, to be rededicated to the Lord. And it is our responsibility, it's our responsibility uh, for us to know that God will often intervene and when God intervenes he is calling us to some new victory or some new place in life. Every life has its landmarks. Some memorials may commemorate triumphs or tragedies. Some landmarks may commemorate successes or failures. Some landmarks may be important to a community or they may point to you in your own personal experience. But the finest landmarks in life are those which call attention to what God has been to us and what God has done for us. And so as I talk about the landmarks of life on today, I want you and I to simply think about what God has done for us, what God has done through us, and what God has done to us. Samuel had such an episode in his life where we find that Samuel set up a stone. And as Samuel set up this stone, this stone was meant to be a landmark. It was meant to be a reminder. It was meant to be a place where Samuel and the children of Israel were reminded that what God did for them in the past should serve as a reminder of what God would do for us in the future. As we honor February this important month of history, it's very important that we know that just as God has operated on our behalf in the past, God will continue to operate for us in the present, but also have hope that God will operate for us in the future. Uh, we're all familiar with Samuel. Samuel was one who had a miraculous birth. His mother Hannah was buried. Uh, barren to the point where she was being made fun of, but Hannah cried out to God to open her womb, to 
give her a son. God blessed her with Samuel. She took Samuel when he was small and dedicated Samuel to the Lord. Samuel went on uh, to be raised uh, in the house of Eli, trained to be a priest and trained to be prophet. Samuel was what might be considered someone who served on God's transition team. He served in a transition between the period of the judges and the period of the prophets and the king. In fact, Samuel served as maybe a judge, a prophet, and a king, but he transitioned the nation of Israel to a period of time that was very important. Samuel was so important that the Bible uh, in Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 1 and in Psalm 99 and verse 6 compares the ministry of Samuel to the ministry of Moses. So no, Samuel was not so, some unimportant figure in the Bible. He was a very important figure in the Bible to the nation of Israel and even to you and I. So as we look at these landmarks of life in this episode in the life of Samuel and the nation of Israel, we see, number one, that a landmark is a good place to help us to look back. A landmark is a good place to help us to look back. The Bible says in King James, hitherto, in a more modern translation, it says that the Lord has helped us up to this point. Uh, as uh, as an African American, as I think about my history, I know that God has helped us up to this point. And something that stands out in my mind as I was looking at a documentary on the other day, this documentary centered on Martin Luther King, and what stood out to me during the Civil Rights Movement was 1963. 1963, uh, as I look back, was a significant moment in that movement. Uh, it was a moment in the movement that was of significance. In 1963, on April the 16th, Martin Luther King was arrested in Birmingham. And when he was arrested in Birmingham, we know that he wrote that letter from a Birmingham jail. Very difficult for him to write that masterpiece because when he asked uh, the jailers uh, for a pen and for paper, they told him, this is a jail. You don't need any pen or paper. But he found a way to write down scraps uh, of, of that uh, particular letter or pieces of that particular letter on scraps of paper, excuse me. And he smuggled them out of the prison to one of his field uh, uh, persons, Wyatt T. Walker. And Wyatt T. Walker took these little scraps of paper to the secretary of Martin Luther King. Her name was Willie Pearl Mackey King. She took those scraps of paper that Martin Luther King used to transcribe and jot down notes for the letter of a Birmingham jail. She took them, transcribed them, and now we have that letter from a Birmingham jail. That was April 1963. In August of 1963, we have the March on Washington where many black and white from all different faiths gathered. And Martin Luther King rendered in August of 1963 that great speech, I have a dream. But then in September of 1963, September the 15th in fact, four little girls were killed in that bombing in 16th Street Baptist Church in 1963. Three moments of the movement that we look back and see what took place in 1963, but they all led to the Civil Rights Act of 1964 being passed. And so I look back on that moment in time in 1963, and I see how God took that moment in the past and was able to do something significant. And so a landmark is a period in time that should call us to look back. But also, my friends, a landmark is a moment in time that should cause us to look up. It should cause us to realize that it was the Lord that helped us. A song 
that we don't sing often in church anymore is a song that says, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. There's no other help I know. And when you and I look up, just like our ancestors, we are looking up because we know there is nobody that can help us but God. Psalm 121 is a psalm that says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Psalm 21 is a song of a sense. It is a song that is encouraging you and I to look in another direction, to look up instead of looking out, to look up towards God instead of looking out at our situation. In the language of the song, we are encouraged to lift up our hearts, lift up our souls, and lift up our minds to God. My friends, our souls must look out from itself and to an all-sufficient God. Under a sense or in a sense of complete need with the prospect of complete supply from God. Whenever you and I take that upward look to God, we are looking up to God in our desperate need, knowing that God will supernaturally supply whatever you and I are needing. It's a place when we look up that our need and God's fullness come to me. I remember a story of a woman who worked so very hard at her computer, worked so very hard at her laptop, worked so very hard at her iPad, that her eyes began to strain. In fact, an optometrist will tell us that if we stare at the light and stare at the screen too long, that it can affect our vision. Well, this woman worked so hard and so diligent at her technology, at her laptop, at her iPad, at her computer, that her eyes began to stress and strain and she couldn't see very well. So her optometrist made a recommendation. He said, every now and then, I want you to look up from the screen and look out your window. And he asked her, what do you see out your window? She said, without my upstairs window, I have a very picturesque view of the hills and the mountains. The optometrist said, here's what I want you to do. Every so often during the day, I want you to look up from what you're working on. And when I want you to look out the window at the hills for a different perspective. My friends, that's what Psalm 121 is telling you and I. Every now and then, we need to look up from our situation. Look up from our circumstance and look out at the hills and the mountains for a different perspective. The psalmist is telling you and I that we've got to somehow look up and realize that God has a better perspective of our situation than you and I can ever have. So Samuel is telling us at this landmark of life that we've got to look back and realize that God is the one that has helped us up to this point. We've got to look at the landmarks of life and look away from our situation and take the upward look to God. But then lastly, Samuel is telling us that a landmark is a good place for you and I to look forward. We not only look back, we not only look up, but we look forward with a great promise. The Bible says in verse 12, as God has helped us, so God will continue to help. Ancestors to say that, that God is my help when I am helpless. And I think about a wonderful story in the Bible, John chapter 5, there was a helpless man who was at the pool of Bethesda. Pool of Bethesda during the time of the early New Testament was like a spa. Uh, it was a place where persons would go and get in the water and that water was supposed to supernaturally heal their body, heal their aches and pains. But at this supernatural spa, at the pool of Bethesda, there was a man who was helpless. Because the Bible says that when he had an encounter with Jesus and Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? The man said to Jesus, yes I do, but I'm an invalid, I'm impotent. He said, I have nobody to help me to get into the pool. At that moment, he was a helpless man. But Jesus is still the one, just like that man, who is our help when we are helpless. 
And Jesus said, if you have the faith to believe that I can help you, I'll help you into the pool. And Jesus helped that man. He healed that man. And that man picked up his mat. He walked and he followed Jesus. There are some significant landmarks in our life that call us to look back, call us to look up so that you and I can look forward. My friends, never forget because God wants us to look back. He wants us to look up so that God can help you and I to move forward. Whatever landmarks you have in your life, God has placed them there to be reminders of his help up to a certain point, to be reminders that he is the source of our supply, and to be a reminder that God is the one that will help us in the future. My friends, be blessed. No matter what you may be going through, God is the significant person, the source of your healing, the source of your strength, and the source of your supply. Be blessed. Be strengthened by the Word of God. And thank you for joining us in our Bible study here at First Baptist Church, North Tulsa. Father in heaven, we thank you richly for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you, God, that you give us significant moments in life where you remind us of your truth, you remind us of your provision, you remind us of your promise. And so, God, as we look unto you, help us to know, God, that you'll be with us tomorrow and even in the days of him. So, God, we are thankful. Thankful for this Bible study. Thank you for this time to teach. Father, bless those who are viewing. Bless even the remainder of their evening. And God will always give your name the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, and I'll see you all next week.